K4, never push your luck, blood, you know the score. I ain't tryna be a tough guy neither, but I take the key with the lead. All the people slash every one of them, some of the limbs. I never been so proud every time my kids. I remember the day that I finally flipped and switched from the pricks that were giving me lip. Bring the misery in, I deliver the win. For the sinners out there that are killing the whim. The doctor is in and I'm causing a panic. I walk in a surgery, talking on my blood. I'm about to stab you up. Got a chainsaw here, right here for your guts. Blood, I'm insane in the membrane. Head case with a full arm in the rib cage. I'll be pulling your lungs out. With a nice pick to the cranium Take a photo Like I'm on vacation Got a couple screws loose That thing that's blatant Big break you know I'm a serial killer Slash a villain Just making a living You don't wanna fuck with a serial killer like me Like me Cause I finally lost the plot It's not stop Rock blind in my top 10 What's up guys, so today is a video that I've been meaning to do for a very long time. It's a review of my Yamaha R3. Now, if you're an old school old school yeah. if you're an old school subscriber, you may recognize this place. The sun seems to be keep hiding behind the clouds. Behind the camera right now is actually where I filmed my KTM Duke uh 125 review, which has done really well. People love that video, and I thought I'm gonna have to do one for the R3. And I can tell you right now. Before I even start to get into details, this bike has been amazing. Over, I've had it over a year now and it's never had any problems. It's been a, a dream to have and I don't regret buying it whatsoever. If you are new and you've just clicked on this video, walking into bushes. If you are new and you've just clicked on this video, I am Mighty Midget, I make motorcycle videos. I have a Honda Grom, a AJP PR4 200 and a Yamaha R3. People are gonna hate me for saying this, but this is definitely my favorite bike. It's It's been absolutely amazing. I've done over 11,000 miles on it now. Had it for over a year. Um, so I think this is a perfect time to kind of get into details uh, and explain it. I will have all the mods, because as you can see, it's pretty customized. There's a, a lot of mods on it. Uh, that, that will all be linked down in the description. So if you want a whole list of that, then you can go click on that. If you want to see the video, if it's out yet, the video for the, the mods, I'll be filming that straight after this review video. That will give you an insight and I'll kind of go into each, each mod individually and explain things. If you want, you can check out the build series that I did on this. It's nothing like Motonosities. I haven't fucking street fighted it or cut the frame or anything. I've literally... It, it, it's mostly RNG stuff, which is a, an amazing company. They do loads of crash protection and things like that. But let's go into the bike. Um, now, a lot of people say that you'll get bored of the power very quickly on this bike. And that's mainly because of Americans. Uh, they have big open roads and they, they can get anything they want. Um, it's recommended to start on a, a small CC bike like this, like a 300. In the UK, we have to start on a 50cc, then work up to a 125, then a 300, uh, well, yeah, a 300-ish bike, um, and then you can upgrade. Uh, I won't get into the whole license thing, it's, it's complicated. But I went from a 125 to this, and I can tell you the power difference is immense. You're going from about 15 brake horsepower to near enough 47, um, and, and, and you can feel it. And over the year that I've had this bike, I haven't got bored of the power whatsoever. It has been so much fun. And the more mods I do to it, you upgrade it a little bit, you can, you can feel the difference. With a small bike like this, any change you do, you feel the difference immensely. It's, it's incredible. Um, my friend had a, a, a KTM Duke 390. He's now added an extra 10 horsepower to that. And I, I rode it the other day, and you can feel the difference. It's, it's, it's incredible. Um, which I love about these bikes, these little CC bikes. Um, if, if you want to see more videos of the R3, I've done uh, a road trainer chase an R1, I've done twisties, I've done street riding, I've done everything, drag races, 0-60s, to 60s, uh, all that stuff. So if you want to see any of that, head over to my channel, you can find it all there. But I have to say, if you, if you ride your friend's bike, so I've rode uh, a KTM LC 640, I've rode a Suzuki SV650, and feeling the power from that... You get addicted to that. You want that kind of power. So I have to say, if, you've, if you're going to get an R3 and you think you're going to get bored of it, 
don't ride other people's bikes that are more powerful because you'll always want that more power then when you when you've discovered that kind of power you want it um but if, if you just keep to this r3 you, you'll be fine but right let's talk about some stuff let's start off at the front here let's talk talk about the brakes yamaha are known for uh not having the best of brakes and that definitely says for the yamaha r3 it's got a single disc on the front and a single disc on the back. Not sure what the make of brakes are, but they are just sponges. They're 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 absolutely terrible. And that's one what one that is one mod that I wish I had done is have upgraded uh, upgraded the uh, the caliper, upgraded the the brake pads, and added some uh, braided brake lines just just to get that extra bite. Really, after riding the KTM LC640. Yeah, the, the Brembo's that had, you, you can really feel them. They're, they're, they're so much better than these brakes. These are just just sponges. They're, they're, they're really not good brakes. does come with ABS stock, uh, which is nice to have. I've obviously got some RNG uh, front fork protectors. I've got some RNG header protectors and radiator cover. And it's just nice to have some crash protection as, as where you can. I've got some... Uh, rim tape as you can see it's all reflective at night it looks pretty cool tires the stock tires i'm not sure what stock comes uh tires come stock they're, they're not bad i took them around cheddar you can see a video of me riding around in cheddar with them uh which is kind of our like canyon road and they're not bad they're, they're they come with enough grip that you're not gonna slide off and get scared but i did decide because they were getting time to you know change anyway that i'd upgrade to some diablo rosso twos and I have to say, if you're going to get an R3, get some Diablo Rosso 2 tyres on there at least, because they are amazing. You can really feel the difference with these tyres. They just stick absolutely everywhere. In the wet, in the dry, they are just, just incredible tyres. So if you can, get some tyres. They're not super expensive, but they really do make a difference. Front forks, um, they're actually really good. The suspension on this bike is, is set up for road, obviously. Um, and it's not too soft and not too hard. It's kind of perfect for the street. I've ridden over potholes and stuff. And you do feel it. Um, it's not like my dirt bike. You can't just fly over them. But, like, it is set up for for, for the street. And, and it's it, it does a really good job of that. Um, I would probably change some bits uh, for going to the track. But that's up to you. If you're going to take a bike like this to the track, then you, you probably want to get some Olin suspension on the rear and stuff. So... That's pretty much that. The light, this is one thing that kind of annoys me with, um, because I wish they had done both lights. So I'll start it up in a minute and I, I just wish that they had done both lights. Now, when you start the bike, you have this running light here, which is, is nice to have. It's quite cool. You have then this light, which is your normal beam. And then this is your high beam or it's the other way around. I'm not sure. Um, and I and I just I, I just wish they had done both because it looks so much better having both on. I've had people when I've been riding down uh, the street and stop me and be like, "One of your headlights is busted." I'm like, "It's not. It's it's literally just because Yamaha couldn't have two lights here." But I I think the front of this bike looks amazing. I, I think it looks angry um, and looks really cool. I've got some other mods over here uh, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, one of them is um RNG block off plates for the mirrors. Um, or blank plates or whatever you want to call them uh, which gets rid of the mirrors and I can tell you when the mirrors are gone and the front of it it reminds me of the dragon from um, How to Train Your Dragon the tooth or, Toothless or whatever his name is <laughs> really does I've got these mini indicators and I have to say they're so much better than stock ones the stock ones are absolutely horrible these are LED but I wouldn't recommend these ones um, because they, they, they shine up really well but they are just really, really small. Um, I didn't actually put these on. I bought the bike with these on, and they're, they're just tiny. Like, on the rear, with the, the tail tidy, they are absolutely tiny. Tiny, tiny, tiny things. Um, so I wouldn't recommend them. I'd go for something a little bit bigger. But they are nice to look at, and they do shine up quite well. Mirrors. Mirrors are never the greatest things on motorcycles. <laughs> um, and these are no exception. They don't look bad on the bike. They don't stand out too much, but when you're actually on the bike, 
what you can mainly see is your elbows. You have to do this whole kind of chicken wing thing to be able to see behind you, which isn't wasn't fa it's not fantastic, but what can you do on a sports bike really? Um, I haven't made it easier on myself by putting some wider vortex clip-ons on, but that's that's that really. Um, let's talk about the dash because the dash is one thing that really sold me on this bike. I think the dash is beautiful. It really shows up so much. You get a fuel gauge, temperature gauge, gear indicator, miles, miles per hour. Um, this rev counter looks stunning. Neutral light, you know, all the biz. It is absolutely awesome. You don't get modes on this bike, um, but you don't really need them. Like it's, 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 it's never, like you're never gonna need a, a lower mode really. You haven't got traction control or anything like that. It's just ABS. Uh, which you can see the ABS light there. But yeah, the, the dash is absolutely beautiful. Never had a problem with it with steaming up or any condensation in it. Um, can, it's always visible. You, it, at night, it really, it really lights up and it looks, it, it looks really cool. Let's talk about this. This is my steering damper. Um, and right now I've got it all the way to the lowest setting. Um, but it, it does make a hell of a difference. Like going around the, the canyons, if I turn that up, and go on some more like long, t uh, long slopey roads. That sounds like an R1. Um, let's see if we can see it. Oh no! Oh, I don't know what that was. Um, it, it really does make a difference, and it's not. It's nice to have, um, especially on the highway as well, or or, or on motorways. Going at 70 miles an hour. You get blown around by the wind, just turn that up and you feel so much more planted, so much more stable. Uh, especially on a light bike like this, it's, it's really good to have. So if you can get something like that, they're not too expensive, about 100 quid. Um, some of the Aeolians ones are a bit more expensive. Um, but this one's a savage one and it's it's really good, I really recommend it. Oxford heated grips, I can't live without these things, they're, they're my babies. Right, I ride all year round and riding in the winter, your hands get absolutely freezing. I've got winter gloves, but having the heated grips is just... It's just amazing. And these ones are really good. You get 30%, 40%, 50%, 75%, and 100%. And I can tell you, you can set it so your hands aren't always boiling hot. You can have it so it's just a little bit warm. 100% is fucking boiling. Like, that will burn your hands. But I normally set it to about 50, and I'm, I'm all good. So, these Vortex clip-ons. Took the stock ones off, put these ones on. It wasn't too hard to do. You had to draw some holes in to get the uh, uh, switch gear on. But they're so much lighter than the, the stock OEM ones. And these are seven degrees lower, I believe. So it gives you a lot more sporty position. I'll sit on the bike in a minute and show you. They are awesome to have. If, you, if you're going to get an R3 and you want it to be a little bit more sporty, um, they're, they're great to have. You, do sit, you really do sit in a much more sporty position. You can feel it and it makes a big difference. Having the, 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 the grips out wider as well, you can turn into to corners way much better than the stock ones. I'll, I'll see if I can uh, link... Uh, a website down in the description which will show you how you sit on a bike and stock on this bike you're set up quite like you're set up right it, you don't feel like you're on a sports bike on it so if if you are really wanting to uh make this turn into this turn this r3 into a bit of a sports bike go for the vortex clip-ons they are awesome little ram mount for my phone or sat nav this little cable here is because i've re removed the air AIS system, I think it's something like that, um, and added some block off plates. That was just because I fitted an M4 exhaust, the Street Slayer exhaust, which sounds amazing. There'll be a full uh, full video linked in the description you can check out. With this exhaust, you do have to cut the stock pipes, so you cut it off, uh, remove the cap, and slip this one on. But I bought some new headers for it, some lightweight headers, and this just slipped on, and it made a big big difference a huge power difference and a huge weight reduction it's it's incredible added the block off plates and flash tuned it with uh flash tuned ecu awesome awesome thing it's it's a lot of money uh and people say why did you spend this much money i've spent about three grand on mods on this bike and people say why have you spent this much on on a little bike like this i like doing this i, I always mod my bikes out to make them the way i want to make them and Doing this to this bike, I've really learned a lot. I've had this bike literally completely apart. I've had the tank off, all the fairings off, um, and I've learned so much on working with bikes by doing this. And it's, it's it's a good learning curve. And I wouldn't recommend spending all this money, but I do recommend having all the crash protection. I got these RNG uh, 
no, you can't see, RNG uh, crash bobbins, RNG engine covers, um, we've got the swing arm covers as well, um, loads of RNG stuff, got a little R3, little uh, brake reservoir cover there, uh, solo seat cow, uh, tank pad, keyless um, fuel cap, as I said, you can see all these little bits before I put them on the bike on the R3 build series. Um, the rim tape, I think this is the last time I'll ever do rim tape. I did rim tape on the KTM Duke and I've done uh, the rim tape on the R3 now and they make the bike look amazing and at night they look really cool but just having them peel off all the time and having to super glue them down is just a pain in the ass. Uh, you may be able to see some of them are peeling off already. It's annoying but it happens. Now rear sets I had a problem with. I, I didn't know what I was going to get. I wanted some, I think they're logic Logitech or something, Logitech's computers aren't they, but I wanted some really nice uh, rear sets and I ended up going with these Area 22 ones just because they are about 300 quid cheaper than other ones I was looking at, they come with the little red bits on them um, and this blackness and they, they look just, they just match the bike amazingly but you can't adjust them and then, well you can adjust this bit but you can't adjust where your foot goes so you can't have them further up and make it into a, a, a bit more sporty position, which was kind of annoying. Um, so they are still where the stock ones were, but they just look better. They just look amazing. Um, I've got an RNG shock tube back here. That's just I haven't done anything to the rear suspension. I've just covered it up with a, a shock tube. We have this black rear hugger, which if I can link this one down in the description, I will, because this matches the swing arm so well. And I didn't think it would, but it really does. And this, this makes a hell of a difference to the, the appearance of the bike. Right, I'm going to have to talk to this camera now. Um, because that camera's died. Um, I don't know when it died. But I was talking about this this, this uh, uh, rear hugger. It just matches the bike and makes it look so much better. RNG tail tidy. Not much to talk about there. Right, I kept the same sprocket sizes, but I changed them over to some, uh, I think it's JTS or S, something like that. A gold chain. Uh, obviously you can't see it on this side, but it, it, it looks so much better with an RNG uh, chain guard. And uh, that's that's pretty much it. That's, I think that's all the mods on it. If I've missed anything out, as I said, it'll be all linked in the description. But it is an amazing bike. Handling on it, it's so lightweight. It's, it's, it's just, you, you can just fly into corners. As I said, the only thing that really annoys me is the brakes. That's the one thing that I find annoying on this bike is just the brakes. The brakes are just not great. Other than that, the bike is stunning, amazing, awesome. Oh yeah, some shorty levers and some RNG bar ends as well, and some tank pads, uh, tank grips, and a black tinted windscreen as well. Um, as I said, it will all be linked in the description. I've, uh, we'll also show you the passenger pegs on. I've taken them off, but I did put some uh, different passenger pegs on. And an RNG kickstand shoe. I'm, I'm seeing little bits now. I've got about 40 mods on this bike altogether. Um, but yeah, she is, she's amazing. I'm going to get my, oh, we've got an old lady coming. Hey, yo. He's a little <laughs> so i got the session set up over there now. Um, I'm going to be quick because I've been jabbing on for ages and cameras are uh, beginning to die. But the, the reliability on this bike is just amazing. The only thing I've replaced is the front light because that uh, blue and that, it's just something that happened. I've simply replaced it. Other than that, not a problem. No fuel leaks. Uh, the gears have been amazing. Obviously, going from a KTM Duke, that had loads of gears issue and electrical issues. Going to this, this thing's built like a beast. It's <laughs> never had a problem. The gears are awesome. You, you hardly ever jump out of neutral. I think I've only had it about three times where I've just gotten into a bad gear, and that's because of me not lifting my foot high enough to change gear. Other than that, she's been spot on. She's been amazing. Um, uh, the power on this is very linear. Um... If you know me, you know I like my torque, and riding very torquey bikes is kind of where I'm at at the street. Uh, I much prefer torquey bikes. But having this very linear power, so what I mean by that is you put on the throttle and there's power, 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 power. There's not like you put on the throttle and there's just a one surge of power, or like an R6 where you put on the throttle and nothing happens, nothing happens, and then it's all the power. With this, there's always power throughout the whole rev range. You just pull, and I think... The top peaks on this is about 9,000. Um, 
you hit about 9,000 revs and then you can really, really feel the pull. Uh, but it is very linear power. Comfort, comfort. The seat is very comfortable for the passenger as well. It's very comfortable. You have to be riding for about three hours for then your ass to hurt. Uh, but other than that, she's, she's awesome. She's an awesome bike. If you're thinking to get one as your first bike out in America or maybe you're on your A2 here in the UK or just anywhere, get one because she is amazing like i've set her up so she is very in a very sporty position um if you can see um i'm gonna get my camera cameraman is the session still going is there a red flashy light on it yeah cool so she is in a very much more sporty position but like as i said it's not super sporty so my wrists don't hurt that it just it just helps the handling have all these vortex clip-ons but I've, i think i've jabbered on enough if i had to rate the bike i would say an 8.5 the brakes let it down and it just lacks that excitement of a talkie bike other than that this bike is perfect built well um and and just incredible but let's start her up and show you what she's really like the m4 exhaust she sounds amazing Price wise on these, uh, four grand for one of these, um, second hand or brand new, they're about four, four and a half brand new I think. Um, it's expensive, especially for a starter bike, but I'm telling you it is worth it. They are absolutely spot on and compared to a, like a Ninja 300, they're, they're much more powerful than a, a CBR, one, two, uh, a CBR 300, um, but the, it's, it's, it's a hard game between this and the Ninja 300. Um, if you had to choose, I would just go with the one you look best because there's hardly any difference in them, if I'm honest. If you want to see a comparison video of all of them, I'll link it down in the description. I'm still trying to get a test ride on my mate's uh, Ninja 300. Uh, but yeah guys, this bike has been awesome. I want to say thank you for watching. If you are new, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It's completely free and it would really mean a lot to me and really help me out. Hit the like button if you have enjoyed and... Get yourself an R3, because they're awesome. <laughs> so these are some of the mods that I bought that I never put on the bike. Um, well, I've put the RNG blank plates on before, and they do look good. This was a reservoir, um, brake reservoir. I just didn't end up, like I said, I wanted to do the brakes, but I never got time to it. Um, and when I was gonna do it, I was gonna bleed all the brakes and put that on. These are some front fork uh, adjusters. Never had the time to put these on, um, and to be honest, I like the, the silver on the stock bike. Um, so th these would literally would go in place of these, and it does look kind of cool in black, but for some reason I just preferred this with the gold and everything. Um, and this is... Ooh, they're, they're all inexpensive, all these little bits, they're all inexpensive under 50 quid. Uh, actually, I think they're all under 40, 30 quid. They're not, they're not expensive at all. Um, I can't get this back in now. <laughs> get in the book. There we go. Um, and these, this is just simply uh, black fairing bolts. So instead of having all these silver bits, they're black. Um, and I just never had the time to replace them all. So that's the mods I haven't put on the bike. As I said, I, I wanted to do little bits like the brakes on those mods, but never had the time the m4 exhaust is a must-have this person the best exhaust you can have for the r3 in my opinion i did have an acroprovic slip on um which i'll link a video down in the description you could check that out it was just a slip on it didn't sound amazing but it didn't sound bad either but chucking this on this exhaust it has personally i think it has a much deeper sound than the other exhausts you can get for this bike um and it sounds not similar but close to Closer than the other ones to the R1 exhaust. It is a parallel twin bike and it does have that kind of low down sound but you get up higher and it, it, it goes higher pitched as you accelerate. And yeah, guys, this bike's amazing. Really do recommend it. It's, it's been amazing.
One more thing I want to add is the engine brake on this bike is really, really good. Like, it's not too much to catch you out. It doesn't come with a slipper clutch, so downshifting too much will lock up the rear wheel, which is kind of annoying, but you get used to it. Just rev matching when you downshift. But yeah, it's, it's really good. It's not like the MT-07, which really catches you out. It, 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 yeah, it, it's a good engine braking. It's there, you feel it, but it's not too much to take your head off. One other thing, the seat height on this bike is just yeah, pretty much anyone can sit on it personally i'm five foot five so i'm not the tallest person and i have no problem sitting on this bike i can get both feet down not quite flat but flat enough and it's so lightweight that you never really have a problem of dropping it i've, I've never been close to dropping this bike i was close to my duke it was a little bit taller i was on tippy toes but with this the seat is is nice and low and it really does feel feel fine like yeah